Hi and welcome to Safe in the Real World. I'm Ahmed Said, and today we are going to be talking about the enterprise architecture role uh, in Safe. Now this role is a really important role that sits at the top of the scaled agile framework, big picture that's a portfolio tier and this role guides the enterprise on what architecture is going to be needed to support its vision. And in my opinion, it's one of the most impactful roles in terms of enabling an organization for agility. Now, if you've got an organization that's got a mishmash of ill thought out systems and aging infrastructure, fragile code, kind of dubious development practices, you, ca you can't really just plaster an agile process on top of that. So it's really important to understand what this role is and understand how we can do this effectively. Another point that I just want to uh, I just want to uh, bring to your attention is that due to the size and scale and impact of this um, uh, of this role it may not be a single person so it may be more of a function than an individual role depending upon the size and scale of your organization so let's get started and have a look and see how um, how this role plays an impact on agility now as I said the architecture role is it is almost like a uh, the um, the role that provides the foundation upon which we can actually start to build an agile uh, organization. So it's really important that this is built up on uh, on the right foundation, as I said. So let's have a look and see how this supports the overall organization so the first thing is any organization we've got this vision it's a big broad vision and what we want to be able to do is to have this vision and hopefully have an architecture in place that supports this vision which which hopefully is fairly obvious to everybody so in a way what we want is we want the architectural function to be able to respond to the uh, business innovation that's actually occurring right and so they would do this by providing a guidance on a kind of technology that they'd be using now I've seen so many organizations where you've got uh, 10 different tools doing pretty much the same thing with slight nuances and slight variations and each team chose a different tool uh, different technology because it was their favorite if you like and now before you know it you have a look at it and you've got this proliferation of tools you've got all these support overheads you've got insist uh, inconsistency you've got inoperability you've got problems with uh, when you're when you're trying to move individuals from one team to another because they need to learn these new tools that do nearly the same thing so really at this level what you want to be able to do is to provide some sort of guidance in terms of the technologies and the tooling that you want to use now the next thing you want to be providing some kind of information and guidance on is really is the infrastructure so are we talking about cloud on-premise offerings? Um, what is it you need um, uh, uh, to support your customer requirements, right? So if, for example, if you're a Tesla and you are actually pushing software updates to, to customer vehicles, you're going to have different infrastructure requirements than if you're like, for example, a standard car manufacturer, right? On the other hand, as you know, Data is such a big problem at the moment in terms of, it's such a big problem in terms of how we can handle such vast volumes of data. Many organizations have um, kind of like uh, grown, grown up with uh, having different differing pools, uh, disparate pools of data if you like. You've got duplicate information, you've got contradictory data in there, and how do you how do you actually build upon a data pool that's actually um, not uh, reliable if you like okay what are your data requirements and how do you actually how how frequently do you need uh, this data to be able to make real-time decisions so these kind of this kind of um, information and this kind of guidance if you like to the overall organization is really important um, so that the the um, uh, the teams and the agile release trains and the value streams they can all understand what are the data requirements now um, another thing is how, what is your pathway to life 
Okay, so what I mean by that is, is that when you are actually releasing uh, not just software, but even, uh, you know, an update, a solution, a product, a consumable solution, which may be software, but also involve business process change as well. How are you going to be, how are you going to be releasing stuff like that, right? So it, um, are you a Facebook where you're doing canary releases and dark releases all the time? Or are you a traditional bank that requires, you know, huge segregation of duties and you've got multiple uh, stages that you need your deployment to go through so what's your organization philosophy you know is it a release fast and break things in uh, or is it we want you to get things right the first time these philosophical questions are going to impact your approach and they are going to color the um the infrastructure if you like and the guidance that you'll you will be giving at this level and finally um what are your non-functional requirements okay what's your uh, what what are, what's your availability like so if you're the nhs then for example what you're going to want to make sure that you are available right as an example right if security is really important and your paypal right then then obviously you're going to want to make sure that the architecture is is very um and your design approach and your overall philosophy really takes into consideration that that security importance if speed is important to you for example you're a google then the or your entire architectural approach everything around your infrastructure your servers and everything is going to be uh, is going to need to be geared towards that um, or if for example scale is really important to you if you're a facebook and you're continuously growing then you're going to need to make sure that that your your overall guidance and your approach is is oriented towards towards that thing so uh, um, one approach as i said is um, driven by the vision okay so you're responding to what the requirements and the needs are from the business and you are coming up with appropriate solutions and guidance to all of the teams and the trains and the value streams on how to do that okay now, one challenge that I've seen is, is, is that, you know, really, if I'm honest with you, enterprise architecture, and I'm sorry, I don't want to sound like I'm blaming, uh, 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 blaming a particular kind of field, but I really do feel that in many ways they're very responsive. And in many organizations, at least the ones that I've worked in, they're more responsive and they don't drive the innovation side of things as well. So what I want to talk about in the next uh, section is around how can we drive innovation as part of this role or function, okay? So that's the enterprise architecture role that sits at the portfolio tier in the safe big picture. I hope you found that useful. Do sign up to Safe in the Real World at www.sprintzero.com. I look forward to uh, speaking to you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye.